Good evening, and welcome to the Old Macedonia Baptist Church Bible Study. Our Bible lesson tonight is entitled, Salvation is in Christ Jesus Only. Our foundational scripture is Romans chapter number 10, and we will be studying verses 1 through 13. Pray with me, and we will get into tonight's lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. We thank you that the Holy Spirit will teach us that we might apply our hearts to wisdom, to knowledge, and unto understanding. May we be obedient to your word. And as our obedience is fulfilled, may we teach others. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. So let us begin reading tonight at Romans chapter number 10, verses 1 through 13. And it reads as follows. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that is that that they might be saved let's read that again brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be saved for i bear them record that they have a zeal of god but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of god's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of god for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that the man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what says it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We can see that Paul has a sincere desire for his people. His greatest desire is that his people, Israel, might be saved. Paul wanted his people to have a relationship with God through Christ. He did not want his people to be eternally separated from God. Now, you know, Paul was sent by God to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, but Paul never forgot where he came from. He is eager for Israel to believe in Christ. Paul said that Israel was zealous or enthusiastic for God, but he said that they were ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God which comes only through Christ Jesus comes only through faith in Christ Jesus it was not that Israel could not know or did not know that the righteousness of God comes through faith in Christ Jesus. It was that they had chosen not to submit themselves to the righteousness of God. They thought that they could get to God by their works. Instead of putting their faith in Christ, the Israelites were trying to be declared righteous by God for their religious law keeping, despite how they continued to break the law. In John 14 and 6, Jesus made it very clear when he, was, when he was in the earth during his ministry. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. Yet the Israelites rejected this knowledge. They were trying to make themselves right with God by observing the law. They were doing religious works contrary to the word of God. And Paul said in verse four that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. See, you and I are not justified, that is to be put right or to be made right with God by works, for no flesh can be justified in God's sight. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through nine says, for by grace 
or we say through faith, and that not of yourselves, for it is the gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God. Verse 9 goes on to say, not of works, lest any man should boast. The word boast means to glory in a thing. Paul is telling us if a man were to earn his salvation, he would be able to take credit for us. He could rightfully boast of his achievement, but God works salvation in us by grace. And he does it in such a way that he alone gets all the glory for every soul that is saved. Now, in verse 6, it says this. It says, but the righteousness, which is of faith, speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or in verse 7, or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. See, the um, Israelites, they kept looking for the Messiah. Even though he had already come down from, from heaven, they kept waiting for his ascension from the abyss, even though he had already done that as well. For Christ had already been raised from the dead and ascended into heaven and was sitting at the right hand of the Father. They continued to wait for the truth. They already know that they already know to come down from heaven or up from the abyss when Christ had already done both of these things. And then in verse number, um, and then in verse number, it says eight, it says, but what says it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Now, listen, you and I, I want us to know tonight clearly that we need to be saved. We need to be saved. And salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Why do we need to be saved? Why do we need salvation? Well, first of all, we need to be saved because of the fall of man. From the moment Adam fell in the garden, by eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, sin entered into the earth. And consequently, sin and death was passed unto all men. But, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse number 12 tells us, Wherefore? As by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death was passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We also need to be saved. We also need a savior because we, because without sal because without salvation, which only comes through Christ, we are danger in danger of hell. Let me say that again. We need to be saved because without salvation, which comes only through Christ. We are in danger of hell. Hebrews 9 and 27 tells us that after death comes judgment. And if we die without God's salvation, we will be eternally lost. It does not matter how good you might be, how much you have given to the poor, and what you have done in the earth for others, or how great your accomplishments in the earth might have been. Christ is the only way to God the Father. And if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you reject Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, the savior of the world, then you shall be eternally separated from God and will find yourself in hell. We need salvation because we are enslaved to sin and Satan. Romans 3 and 9 tells us that both Jews and Gentiles are all under sin. But Romans 3 and 10 says that there is none righteous. So we need a redeemer. We need Christ to redeem us. To We needed Christ to redeem us, to liberate us, and to set us free. In Christ, we are set free from sin, and we become the servants of righteousness. The next thing I want us to know tonight as we study the fact that salvation only comes through Christ is that Jesus is the only way by which man can be saved. And there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved in the name of Jesus, for there is no other name. Now, you know, there was a, a an event in Acts chapter number three, and it, it and it continued into Acts chapter number four. And what was going on here in Acts chapter number three, Peter and John 
were going into the temple to pray. And this was after the Pentecost. They were going into the temple to pray. And there was a lame man that was brought to the temple every day to beg alms of those going into the temple. And so he asked alms or money from Peter and John. And um, Peter told him, he said, look upon us. And the lame man did look upon them expecting that he was going to receive money from them. But Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the word of God says, Peter took him by the right hand. And lifted him up and immediately the lame man received strength in his feet and in his and his ankle bones. And he stood up leaping and walked into the temple with them. Now what, ha what took place after that was the people saw the lame man walking and praising God. So they marveled at this thing that had taken place because they were astonished at this thing that had taken place. But Peter asked them, he says, why do you marvel at this as if by our own power or by our own holiness that we made this man to walk? He says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his son, Jesus, whom you delivered and denied him in the, price, in the presence of Pilate. Peter said, and his name, through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you now see. Yes, by faith, but yes, the faith by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And so Peter and John were declaring Jesus before these people and letting them know that it was this same Jesus that they turned over to Pontius Pilate that it was in his name and by his power that this lame man um, was able to walk and that had soundness perfect soundness in the presence of these people now what I want us to do is I want us to read chapter number four together in Acts I want us to read Acts chapter number four because I want to get I want to to make a point about this name of Jesus given in heaven and in the earth by which man must be saved. So look at this. It says that as Peter and John, that's who they're referring to here. It says, and as they spoke to the people, meaning Peter and John, the priest and the captain of the temple, captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved. In other words, they were distressed. They were upset that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold to the next day. In other words, they arrested Peter and John and put them in jail uh, for the next day because it was getting late. Now it was even tied. However, many of them which heard the word believed and the number of men was about 5,000. So you cannot contain the word of God. And as it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and, and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have you done this? They wanted to know by what power and by what name had the lame man received strength in his feet and his ankles and was now able to walk in the presence of them all. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said to them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, what by what means he is made whole, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at nothing of you builders, 
which is become the head of the corner. In other words, he's letting them know, you know, you didn't esteem him at all, but he has become the head cornerstone. Neither, and then, then, then Peter goes on to say, he says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so, see, we need salvation. Salvation comes only through Jesus Christ, and there is no other name given under heaven by which man must be saved. And then the thing, and, and then not only that, as we go back to um, Romans chapter number 10, let us look at verse number, let us go back to verse number seven, rather verse number eight, but it said, but what says it? In other words, he says, what, what, what says the faith in Jesus Christ. He says the word is near you even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him, raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So Paul is letting us know that the Israelites were not saved, not because they could not be saved, but because they rejected the righteousness of God. They rejected Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying, but listen, he says the law of God, that, that the law has been fulfilled for Christ was the end of the law. And if you are going to be saved, you must come through Jesus Christ. And how do you come through Jesus Christ? By what you believe in your heart and what you say with your mouth. He says that if you can, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart, that Jesus is Lord. And if you confess with your mouth that, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is important because he says, for with the heart, man believes to righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And so Paul says, if you're going to be saved, then your heart, you must believe in your heart. This thing that you believe in your heart, that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. He says, you must speak that out of your mouth for, for, uh, the, for man believes for the, for with the heart, man believes to righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made for unto salvation and let me show you this other thing here before we close tonight paul said this for the scripture says whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed listen you shall not be ashamed for believing on the lord jesus christ he says he says this in verse number 13 he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved in other words everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Listen, you don't earn salvation by works. It has already been attained for us by Jesus Christ. What we have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and that, that God has raised him from the dead and make a confession that he has raised Jesus from the dead, that thing which we believe in our heart. For we are saved by grace and it is a gift of God. It is not earned. It is unmerited. And let me tell you this. God is offering you a free gift tonight. If, you're, if you are watching this broadcast tonight or if you're watching this this um, video tonight and you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then I want you to know that you are in danger of hell for for the only way to God is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So if you will just confess with your mouth tonight that Jesus is Lord and that you do believe in your heart that God raised him up from the dead, you shall be saved. And not only shall you be saved, but you shall be in the family of God. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Good night.